all, thank you guys for coming. Uh, this is our 52nd anniversary of uh, the company my father started back in 1958. Same name, Star Distributing. So uh, we've been distributing laundry equipment around the southeast for the last few years. And we're very proud and happy to still be here and, uh, and surviving and being successful. And actually, our business has been growing over the last three or four years quite substantially, which is a good thing. Because our business is a necessity. Uh, washing clothes is something that people are going to do. Rain, shine, flood, storm, what have you. Even though we had the flood this year, as devastating as it was, laundry for a big part of it, helping get, get everybody's clothes, the building out of them, and what have you. But it's actually a huge benefit having all those laundromats, the big laundromats there for the people who didn't have power, didn't have washers and dryers, and all that kind of stuff. So it was a big boon for our industry. And luckily, we were there to kind of help support the uh, community. But that being said, we're, we're, we normally we start with the introductions of all the people that are here visiting and what have you, and our staff. But I'm going to hold that until after the first service school because I know there's probably going to be some more people that come in. So I'd like to get once there's more people here, kind of get everybody introduced at once. So we'll do that after this first one. Um, I'm going to introduce Joe Stone with uh, Alliance Laundry System. He is the regional service manager for our our product Speed Queen. And uh, he's here to help support us, been here for the last couple of shows. We definitely appreciate having Joe here with us. And I'm, a couple more people I'm going to introduce real quickly, and I'm not going to go through the whole because there's a lot of people here to support us, uh, but I am going to go through a little bit later. Tom Fleck and Bill Bittner, standing back here in the doorway, are both with Speed Queen Sales. I'm very fortunate to have both of them here, especially Mr. Bittner. This is the, only time he's, the second time he's been down here, so we're very happy to be here. Tom, we're fortunate to have you here every year, a couple times a year. And, he does a great presentation and he's going to wind the day up. One of the best parts of the day is, first of all, you're going to get all this knowledge of how to fix equipment, those of you who want to fix equipment, and then you're also going to get the knowledge of how to run a better laundromat, how to run a more successful business. And that's what today's all about. Uh, the morning is the service, the afternoon is the education, and the lunch and the breakout times in between are for you guys to talk to each other and see what's working in Memphis or Abingdon, Virginia, or down in Alabama, or Illinois. We've had people come from a, long, a large distance, and uh, we appreciate people who have driven in. The pe people who came in last night spent the night here, and we had a little presentation here last night on an investment seminar, and that was very, very, very successful. So uh, again, we appreciate everybody being here. And what, Mickey Forche, I'm gonna bring him on up now. He's my service and installation manager. <laughs> and uh, he's gonna start with the service yeah. school. The last couple of service schools we've had, we've uh, used a, a projector and video because Steve Queen has come out with CDs that have information on each different type of product that we represent and how to do the basic service on it. So once you kind of go through this today, you'll get to see some hands on. Feel free to get up out of your chair, come up and if there's something you want to look at, come on up. This is a kind of a hands on demonstration. Um, I want you to stay awake, stay alive. <laughs> And uh, Mickey will come on up, and uh, most of you guys know Mickey, because he's been with us for, I've lost count, but <laughs> a long time, a long time. And luckily, all, most of our staff has been here for a very long period of time. That's why everybody does a really good job of what they're doing. And it's just it's pretty much seamless every, every day here, which is a good way to come to work. So Mickey, come on up, and we'll get started here. On the, we're going to start with the top load washer. We're just going to touch on that a little bit, because it's kind of a machine that we still need in the laundromat because it's a machine Mama knows how to use and people are comfortable with, but it's not very efficient. And Joe's going to come up and, and they're going to do the service school together. But it's not very efficient because it uses 31 gallons of water. A lot of people are starting to move over to these, these front load washers, which are 20 pounds. So they're larger. This uses 12.6 gallons of water and holds 20 pounds. This uses 31 point, is it 31 point 32. 32? Yep. Okay, this is 32 gallons of water and it's about a 12 to 15 pound machine. So you can't fit, you can bend this, bend this machine almost a dollar higher. You're using much less utilities. But we still use some of these machines even in the new store because we don't want anybody to ever walk into a store and say, hey, oh, there's a machine that we don't have there. And so they will, sometimes they'll turn around and walk out. So we, we spent 40 to 50 in these, these machines in a store, Mr. Cherry. Been in the industry for about 50 years, a little over 50 years now, I can tell you. And now we're putting them maybe five to six. So a big difference. But we're going to go through this kind of quickly. And then we'll, if you have any questions after the fact or during the breakout sessions, call them up. We can answer anything you want, uh, specifics about the machine. If it's anything really detailed, we can actually take this 
off to the side and during another part of the service pool and have one of our service techs go through it in real detail with you if you have something that's one that you want to really learn more about. It. So after that, thank you go right ahead. Joe, thank you very much for coming and you guys go right ahead. Did you take it all out or did you try to do it from underneath? I did it from underneath. Okay, so that's the way I do it. Okay, that's the way I do it. I just take a wooden wedge or a screwdriver or something to stick up in it. Before you pull a pad, then take the bolts out, pull a pad off, replace that one, and then work on the round. Okay, that's my If you pull them all off at once, then you can't, it's hard to get your pad back up in there. But that's the easiest way to do it. A lot of people will take the whole module out, flip it upside down, which that's fine. I mean, that's. If you want to do it that way, that's fine. But it's going to take a lot longer. Uh, Bruce Dixon, is he in here? <laughs> Bruce came up when he first started with Mr. Cherry to uh, learn how to work on washers. And I think the first job I had him do was put brake pads at the apartment complex down the street here laying in water. Laying in a bubble of water. <laughs> <laughs> so he learned. Uh, how do you do it now? Same way or you take it out? Take it out. Well, <laughs> it's according to whatever's easier for you, okay? But if you pull it, if you don't have it out and you're trying to do one of the, all three of them at one time, it's going to be very difficult, okay? But I just, I'll pull one out, put the new one in, bolts back in, and then go around to the other and pull it out. Okay, and that way it's still open pretty good. Now, your, uh, the nylon, uh, like pushing the stuff on the, on the bottom of that, <coughs> on the bottom of your right here the helix yeah the bottom mm -hmm. uh, that offset so your uh, for your spin and everything mm -hmm. when that catches and uh, catching and slipping continuously uh, what causes that it's you may it's just going on by pow 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 yeah. okay that's because <coughs> It's either the nut's not drawn up in there far enough and pulling it up, mm -hmm. or you're missing a washer. Okay. Okay, at the bottom. All if right. you only got one washer and it's doing that, the one that's on there now will never work. Okay, you're gonna have to replace it. Okay. And you might have to replace the pulley because of the pulley's more too, because it's it's more the edges off so it can just slip by. Mm -hmm. But check and see if you don't have a washer under before the bolt, you gotta have a washer under there. If you don't put another one in there, mm -hmm. and it'll give more spice, okay? It'll pull it, so it pulls it out. Pull it, okay? All right. All right. Very well. It, it'll knock bad. All right. Really loud. Well. <coughs> Anybody got anything else, Mom? Are the new pumps retrofitted able to retrofit the old machine? What do you mean the old? Well, the pumps are the same. Is your pump set off to the side? No. Okay, it's set under there. Same it's pump. Got, but it's got the screws in it. Yeah, same pump. Same pump. Yeah, all, all the thing is they added these clips. Okay. So you, can buy the, you can buy the clips to... to you can buy the clips, but you can only get two of them on because there's a notch made in this bracket here in the back for the other. But it's the same pump that's on, that on the wall <coughs> 10 years old. They just added the clips to it to make it easier to change out. 
so I can put the clips on my old machine. Right, you can get the clips on there. Okay. A lot of people have changed them out to the clips. Okay. Okay. Anybody want to see this stuff? Maybe some brake Does anybody ever change transmission on top of yeah, I didn't know they'd ever done it. <laughs> Couldn't prove it. <laughs> uh, everybody knows how to change transmission. You okay, we're not going to take the transmission out of the machine, okay? we got a CD to show you how that you can get, okay, today. But we, we're not going to tear the machine down, okay? The only thing is if you're changing the transmission, make sure when you take the transmission out. There's a lot of problems. We have people put in a new transmission. Then they have calls say the basket will turn. Okay? And they took the transmission out, put another one in. There is papers in here that tell you. Shows it all. The transmissions have a spacer in it. Well the newer ones gonna have a spacer. Right here. If you put this spacer on the transmission that's you got a longer shaft, it pushes this basket up against here. This, it'll never turn. So you, the best thing to do is lay the transmission in the pole with your old one and make sure the length's different, okay? If it's the same length as the one you're taking off, and it, the old one you're taking off don't have a spacer, don't put the spacer on. But if the transmission is longer, if the shaft's longer, you'll need the spacer. Okay. Transmission. I just have to check with them over there on the price. I don't know what the price would be on. And another uh, thing we have people don't know when the, if it's the transmission or what's wrong with the washer. <coughs> they say it won't spin or it won't agitate, okay? The machine will spin but won't agitate. Get under here and you can turn this belt. This grab the transmission and turn it all the way around. Turn it two or three turns to the right. If it goes that way, fine. Okay? You turn it back to the left, you need to turn it two or three times. Okay? If you can't turn that transmission both directions two or three times, either the agitate side is out or the spin side is out. One or the other can't be out, the machine still do one thing, it won't dig up. And it'll smoke the belt on it. Any other questions? Uh, top level. Sometimes we get um, an error message. I think it just says error. Is that one of the common ones? Or? Just error. Yeah. Don't say nothing else. Is it when you're dropping the coins? Yeah. Could you might need to check the level of the machine. Okay. Or the money box to make sure it's not full. If it's a coin drop and you're dropping the coins and you get in there, the box could be too full and the drop coin can't drop down through it. But that's why it comes up error. Does it register the quarter or not? If it just comes up error. A lot of times if the box is full of, and you drop the coin, it won't register the coin. It'll just say error. I think I looked it up in the manual. It's like a communication error. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, though, what we found, only uh, we go out to... If the box was full or the machine is out of level, yeah. And it's not the coins the way the coins dropping, it's not registering the coin. Okay. But check the machine, make sure it's if it's a drop, make sure if it's a slide, it don't make any difference, you know. But it's where it's going past that eye. Okay. It's what's causing the error. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. 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 Okay